Welcome back guys. Today I'm gonna to be demonstrating on how to bone and roll a pork shoulder. For today's demo, I am using a nice piece of New Zealand pork. Um, we're using a square cut piece of pork. It has the hand removed, hand in the hock, so you've got your hock that comes down here and your hand that comes off just here. It's best I always like to have a nice square cut, nice consistent piece of uh, fat that runs along here. And today I'm using something off of around a 50 to 55 kg pig. Um, that in my mind is kind of ideal size, um, but anything bigger is fine. Um, doesn't matter too much. So first, first things first, I'm gonna flip my pork over. Um, so the shoulder is usually taken off between the fourth and fifth rib. Um, you have your neck bone that runs down the side, um, your four ribs, like I was saying, right there. Um, any further down and we start cutting into our loin, so between fourth and fifth is ideal, okay? So today I'm using a five inch boning knife. Um, a smaller knife or a smaller kitchen knife is probably best uh, for boning your pork. You can go a little bit bigger, um, I personally just prefer the five inch. Um, and like I said, a sharp knife is key to any butchering, so make sure your knife is nice and sharp. Even if you pop into your butcher shop, they might even give it a sharpen up for you if you know them well enough. So yeah, so first things first, um, we're just going to start removing our ribs and our neck bone that runs down the side. So we've got a few excess little bits kind of hovering around here, so we're just going to take any little glandy bits off down there. Now I'm going to spin it around and I'm going to start taking the meat. So we've got our neck bone that runs down here and I'm just going to scoop out all this, kind of run my knife down there and scoop out this meat. Okay, this is just stuff that we can use for pork trim. Again, take your time. That stuff's great if we want to make some pork mince. Alright, once you've scooped all that out, we're then going to run our knife down the side of these ribs down here, okay? So, when I do this, I always like to stand it up on, on its side like what I'm doing now. It's nice and easy. And then I'm just going to, I'm using a boning grip. If you're not confident, you can just use a normal grip like that. But we're just going to run down the side. Tip of the knife, like I always say, you don't want to come off that bone, okay? So once you've cleared, cleared that bone there, then we're just going to follow it down, okay? So our pork scotch, or our money muscle, lies down the inside down here. So we need to stick hard to this bone here, okay? We can't, um, if we don't want to come off it, otherwise we're going to start slashing into our more important, more expensive muscles. So following it down, tip of the knife, kind of just a, hold a loose grip. You don't want to hold a tight, aggressive grip because you can kind of need to jiggle around those bones. So we're at the bottom now, so we just need to jiggle all the way around. Like I was saying, we've got those little bones there. All we need to do is run our knife flat up inside there, leaving as much meat on that scotch or money muscle as we can. Okay, so we've removed our foreribs so and we've removed our neck bone now. Um, if you want to be really fussy, you can start moving between and start trimming this out. Otherwise, if you want, you can sit this in a brine and smoke it. Or otherwise, you can use it for dog bones. Anything like that is fine. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you want, you can trim it out, use it for pork mince. So now those bones are removed, I always like to run my hand down the side of that muscle. Just make sure that everything is out. Um, we don't want to have a little bone or anything sitting in there, so we need to double check that. We're good on that side. Now all I'm going to do is just take any little excess bits of fat off. So any of this stuff down here. But I don't want any little nasty dark red bits. And again, we can chuck this into sausage, shrimp, mince, anything. So we're using everything. Utilize every part of the part of the pork shoulder. So now that all that little little excess pieces are out, we need to take the blade bone out. So the blade bone, if you flip it up, you just see the bottom of it there. You can kind of feel a little bit of cartilage just sitting in there. We know where that is. Now what we're going to do is seam off the top of this pork shoulder. So you cut in and you can kind of, as you start to pull it, you, you kind of start to see it seam apart there. Okay, same as when we do a lamb shoulder. Okay, follow the seam. And just, well, you just need to be very gentle coming along here. Okay, use a lot of force and just a little bit of knife work. Okay, we don't want to come off that seam. And we're just going to fold it just down to about there. Okay, then we can see and we can feel that blade bone just there. Okay, we also have another bone that we've got to remove that connects up to our blade bone. You can see that just pointed down there. 
all we're going to do, and because we're rolling it, we want to keep all this muscle together. We don't want to take as much off. And as I'm going, I'm just trimming out any of these little excess kind of glands or veins or anything that we kind of see. I mean, you can cook it. This is just me being a butcher, just being a little bit fussier. So we've done that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the top of this blade bone. Okay, so the blade bone kind of starts, it's around there. That top bone there links up and connects to it. Okay, so I always like to clear the blade bone. So boning grip or normal grip, it's up to you. Use the tip of your knife and you just want to scratch on top of that pork shoulder that blade bone there cool that's all you have to do to free up that bone next one we're going to spin it around and we're just going to run a flat grip the knife's going to be flat on top of the bone here and we're just going to kind of clear our way around it doesn't matter if you make too much of a mess on this you can kind of slash a little bit i guess you can say um, it's all going to be rolled so it's not a major so freed up that bone there, and again we're sticking to that bone, we're not moving off it, we don't want to come too far off, we just want to stay hard against that bone. So I've cleared both sides, now we're just going to run down the side of our blade bone, and down the other side, and we're just going to start freeing this bone up. This is the hardest bone to take out. So we've cleared both sides, now we just want to start clearing around the back, okay? So we just need to take clear around the back of this bone here okay again I kind of flip it around and kind of change my angles a bit it's gonna free up take all that meat off the outside there cool. and now all we need to do is clear the blade bone the bottom of the blade bone okay so I've cleared down both sides there's a couple of different ways of doing this you can just follow around like I'm doing now and I always kind of clear that straight side and then you can just pull it out if you don't want to pull it out you can just work your way around the bone um, you don't have to be too fussy I just like to I like to pull it out because it kind of gets the majority of the meat off it um, and it kind of is easier for me to do that way um, but yeah if you want to trim around you can come around and trim all that out and then with that we're just going to trim any excess stuff we want to get off that and again, we can smoke these. If you've left a little bit too much meat on them, you can you can strew them or you can smoke them or you could do anything with them. So we've removed all our bones from our pork shoulder now. Now what we're gonna do is start trying to trimming our way through it, okay? So kind of taking any excess fat, any glands, anything else we can see. Um, we do have one gland that lies in the front there. We will be taking out right there. And again, the fat is sweet to make sausages with. You know, if you're making fat, if you're making sausages, you want to kind of have a 60-40, 30, sorry, 60-40 or a 70-30 um, pork trim to fat ratio. So there's no real. Cool. So once you've trimmed everything out, I mean, again, it's all eatable. Don't have to be too fussy. We want to start evening up our pork roast. So when we roll it. By evening up, I mean I want to make sure that both sides are even. If we have one side, one side that's a little bit thinner than the other, that side's going to cook a bit faster. So we just want to make sure that everything is even, which everything is looking pretty good at the moment, so you don't have to worry too much. If we are wanting to do that, though, all we need to do is butterfly parts of the meat off and kind of bring it over and even that out. Yep. So, yeah, if, if we're wanting to butterfly, all we're going to be doing is putting a little slit in the meat and kind of bringing it over to the other side, leaving it still attached, um, and we're just evening out that meat. So now that we've kind of, we've trimmed up all that pork, just take that little bit of fat out there. We're pretty much ready to roll there. We just want to finish off and just score our pork roast. With scoring, I, I recommend using a craft knife, or if you have a really sharp knife, a really sharp tip on your knife, um, you can do that, but yeah, to get the best pork crackling, you really want to use a craft knife. Um, and even spacing is key, guys, even spacing. So as I'm scoring, I'm just using the tip of my knife, like I have a nice sharp knife. We don't want to go too deep. If we go too deep, we're going to start cutting into the meat. And everything I'm doing, I'm just doing nice even spaces. Just so I can get that oil and salt rubbed in really nice and deep. 
And then we have a little bit of, the end of the shoulder there is a little bit rough, so we're just gonna trim that off. Take any fat off. Cool, and now we're good to start rolling it. So, if you don't know how to tie a butcher's knot, one of the best things to do is go check out my other YouTube video. I have a video on how to tie butcher's knots. Um, today we're just gonna bang through it quite fast, so it's probably best to go check that out if you wanna go know how to tie and roll. So same with your stringing. Just want nice even knots. Start from the center and work my way down. So that there is basically our pork shoulder is all done and ready to roll. Um, so cook time for one of these, you're looking at 180, you're looking at around an hour and a half. Um, before we cook it though, I always recommend taking it out for an hour, letting the pork get to room temperature um, and rubbing some olive oil into that skin and then rubbing salt as well. Okay, That's just going to make that crackling so much better. Um, and then in the last five minutes of the cook, what you want to do is switch it from fan bake or oven bake and switch that to grill. You want direct heat on that crackling. Within kind of five to 10 minutes, you'll see that crackling kind of start popping and start coming up perfect. And that's when you want to take the roast out. And then we rest it for kind of 10 minutes, start slicing it and serve it. So that's how you bone and roll a pork shoulder, guys. If you want to check out other great videos, make sure you head over to my channel. Also, if you want to follow me on a daily basis, go over and head over to my Instagram page and check that out. Cool, guys. Till next time. See you then.